doing them. Hildegard Nocton, is politics this connect that appears to be there now with people? We saw it in Brexit. We indeed, we saw it in our own general election earlier this year, perhaps. Yes, it certainly seems to be an international trend. Um, this a presidential election was, I think, another example of an anti-establishment vote. And that was, in America, it was against the two parties, in my view, the mm. Republicans and the, the Democrats. And really, Trump was voicing uh, a lot of concerns and he had a narrative that a lot of Americans were thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. And he had that short, concise messaging that resonated with the majority of Americans. So I think, yes, politics is changing. Are there millions of people around the world, and indeed in America, who are feeling this disconnect as a kind of a hangover, if you like, from the great financial collapse, and they no longer trust the political class. What can be done to change that, do you think? I think this is the big debate. I think mm. this is, that's the million dollar question for, for politicians. Um, and I think it's about a new way of doing politics and having to, I suppose, having more transparency. I know there are, there are cliches, but really we need to start, I suppose, reaching out out to citizens and understanding exactly what they expect from their mm. their their politicians and a lot of them are feeling disenfranchised they feel that um, they're, they're struggling and that their the elect representatives are not representing them and it's been going on for a number of uh, administrations in mm. the case of America and we saw it in Brexit for the polls the established media nobody was picking up on it mm. so that's something I think from the media's point of view and from the politicians point of view we need to be looking at how we are messaging what message and where we're going with regard to representing people yeah I mean these are interesting points Andy Kenny at the moment of course is on Taoiseach and he did make some quite strong comments he wasn't alone in that in terms of global politicians it, it, it should be fair to say but how will the government now deal with a Trump president presidency what are the priorities for Ireland as, as far as uh, Fine Gael and the coalition are concerned? I think the key priority now is, as Philip says, is we need to work with this new administration. That's key. Um, Do yes, you think the Taoiseach's comments could create a problem there? I, I don't think so. As you said, many, many people had made comments and quite obvious comments in, in my view and it was quite a, an unusual campaign and the narrative was quite disappointing at times and I'd be the first to say that and I think we do need to articulate how we feel although we, we have a very good relationship with the US but it doesn't mean that we don't articulate you know our own viewpoint. I think what's key now is to work with this new administration yeah. and I think politicians right across the um, international s sphere would appreciate that that you have to respect the will of the people and the people have voted for Donald Trump to be the next president. So from our point of view, immigration will be key, that we um, support our, um, Im the immigrants, Irish Americans who are over there, who have worked very hard in America, who have contributed hugely to the American economy, um, and to work with in relation to trade agreements. And again, we're a small open economy. We have so much to benefit from um, these trade an economy who finds herself, luckily some would say, uh, unluckily others might argue, as part of the global supply chain to America. We have some very important um, American companies here. Would you be concerned that would change because uh, Donald Trump as president said he wants to see those companies return to the United States? Yes, it is a concern. We have to acknowledge that and that's why we need to really work on, on, on these, uh, our, our relationship with the US. I, after the EU, the US is second with regard to exports, so we're hugely dependent on them. And I think the fact that the vice president-elect, now Mike Pence, has got um, Irish connections as, we ever. Need, as ever we need to start you know honing yeah. in on that and hopefully that will be, will benefit us but it's how we place ourselves now so we need to be very positive we need to work constructively we have to build on the good relationship we've had with the US in the past and I think that can be done um, and I know that the Taoiseach has this morning come out you know, categorically saying that he wanted to work with this new administration in a positive yeah. way so that's key and I have to say President Trump this morning gave a very conciliatory speech so I think we, we need to take that at face value and, and work with him on this. It's going to be about how we position ourselves and how we build in our relationship with the US. That's going to be key for Ireland's uh, position going forward and for our immigrants who are in America. Let's, let's look at some of the issues closer to home, if we, if we, if we may. Um, first of all, Brendan Howland speaking about the industrial unrest, ASTI going back into the schoolrooms this morning, and of course the, the difficulty that has been caused by the, the cost of the Garda deal and whether that deal indeed goes through. Are we out of the woods here, or is Lansdowne Road dead now, and a new, new deal will have to come sooner than we think, Hildegard Nocton? No, I don't believe so. I, I, I welcome the fact, first of all, that the ASTI have suspended their industrial action. I think it's a positive move, and it's about engage. We need to work very carefully around all these pay discussions and engagement now because of the economic impacts that this has. And there are measures that can be put in place within the Lansdowne Road framework. And an example of that is the new entrance pay for teachers um, that the TUI and the INTO have signed up to. That's a 15% and a 22% increase in the entrance teacher, teacher, new teacher salary. So that's 
one example of how we can work within the Lansdowne Road Agreement. Um, yes, there will be pressures, we have mm. to accept that, but the government have to really be very careful now how we approach this because we need to balance it with public services as well. And as was said there in leaders' questions, there are many other sectors out there who haven't benefited those who are self-employed, those who mm. haven't had the, maybe the, the securities that those in the public sector have had. And I and I say that in the context of knowing the pressures that they're under and the, the yeah. hardship that people have gone through over the last few years. But we cannot give now and then for in a few months or years' time where we'll be taking more away. We need to be very careful with how we approach so